Welcome to Texas. Yeehaw, we're in Texas, y'all. Yay. Forget the map, all the rules, everything you learned in school. Drive under a Texas sky, a slow road gets us there in time. I know I'll find my way if I'm with you. Louisiana at Camping World and they just had this big parking lot that was empty and so we just pulled over here to stop because the rest areas were closed and there was another class A here when we got here too and man it is cold we've left the swamps of Louisiana well we're still in Louisiana but we left the swamps of the bayou where it was like 80 and now it's like freezing here. But the craziest thing that we just saw, there was this car pulled off on the side of the road on I-10 and this man was walking backwards, like he was facing us, but he was walking backwards in the middle of I-10, you know, in the median. And then what else did we see? A dog hightailing it running forwards down the center median of I-10. From what I could tell, it looked like a border collie, but I was like, how did the dog get out? It was just, I hope they got the dog, but that dog was not stopping for nobody. And why was the guy running backwards instead of running forwards? How are you going to catch a dog going twice as fast as you are if you're not even running towards it? Yes, leave us a comment below if you've seen something like that, or what's the craziest thing you've seen running down the middle of the interstate? Y'all, we just left New Orleans and we are in Iowa again. Surprise! Iowa, Louisiana. Did y'all know that was a thing? Nope. I didn't know it was a thing either. Maybe the fourth one? Just put us right in the middle. The fourth one? Yeah, do I need to get out? Are you okay? I think I'm okay. They don't look insanely level, but that's what our leveling system is for. Hey y'all, we ran over some retread a while ago and we've shown you that video by now. This snap pad also disappeared in the process. Here's our new one. Uh, snap pad is a great company. They stand behind their warranty. They sent us a new one, no cost, no shipping cost, nothing. And they made it really fast. Now we've installed it and Lord willing, this thing will be on here permanently forever. All right, y'all, this is our laundry. After being at the state park for two weeks with no um sewer hookup so now we're fixing to do laundry here in orange texas and 
our advice is if you're planning on full-time RVing and you um, have laundry in your RV to try to have at least three weeks worth of clothes just so you can um, get by to when you can use your laundry again. All right, this is our site tour at Rain RV Park in Orange, Texas. It's a complete concrete pad. The sites aren't very wide, but our RV is um, 36 feet in it. We had plenty of room to park the truck in front and we parked the RV almost at the back of the site. And the site has sewer, it's full hookup sewer, water, there's water and we have 50 amp. The thing is this site does not have a breaker box, which is weird, but the site's really nice. And then there's the truck, which we had plenty of room to park the truck and walk in between the truck and the RV. Hey y'all, do you know that RV manufacturers commonly use the same exact key configuration for many different units? That's why we're going to replace our exterior locks today with locks from RVLock.com. Okay y'all, this is our hall from RVLock.com. The top one is for the entry door and then we have two baggage doors and so we have two of these. Um, as you'll see, one of our baggage doors has, it's wide enough to where it has two locks, but only one is an actual lock. The other one's just kind of a dummy latch, so we're not going to replace that. We're just going to leave it. So let's do an unboxing. The first thing we need, the first thing we're going to do is entryway. So let's see, you get some paperwork. Now we got, they give you some they give you instructions, but I would watch the video tutorial online, go on their website and find it, it's very handy. Now we got this. This is like a gasket, really kind of a big fancy sticker. I don't know if we'll need this, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. I think you might need this if you have like a different colored door other than just white. And uh, when you take the old lock off, the RV lock may not cover the exact shape of what lock you used to have and so this will cover that and it should make it aesthetically better. What else do we have? Oh this is our fourth lock. We have our battery compartment where most people would put like a generator up front so just so they're all keyed alike because when you order from RVLock.com all of your order is keyed the same so that little uh, key lock up front we just got a new one of them that's what that is. Let's see here's the striker plate Here's a key fob, we'll have to program that. Ooh, this has some weight to it. Here's the unit itself, and a key. Yes, keyless entry still has a key. Okay, so it's, oh, there we go. This is the inside. And this is the outside. So the first thing we have to do is take off the old one. So hopefully that goes well. All right, just needed a little finagling. Have you ever seen the inside of an RV door? Foam. Yep. That's all it is. Keep the weight down. Now let's test it for real. Are you nervous? Camera lady is nervous. Camera girl, excuse me. All right. Lock. All right, we're locked out of the RV. Well, check it and see. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> Unlock. Yay. This is our pass-through storage compartment. It's what they call the baggage lock. You see, this one is just kind of a dummy latch. There's no key there, so we're just going to leave that. This one is the one with the key. And unfortunately, got to do this one upside down. All right. Now let's unlock it. Now let's lock it. Solid. 
rolling. All right, now I'm gonna program the keypad. You gotta turn your head, you can't see this. Let's unlock. She wrote. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, tell me how you feel. Paparazzi here, 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 here. Okay. <laughs> Put your sunglasses on. You're getting blinded by the light. You got your sidekick, Mr. Stinkbug, behind you. <laughs> so as I said, and this isn't just an internet rumor. This is something we've heard firsthand from manufacturing. A lot of manufacturers in the RV industry use the same locks, the same keys for multiple different RVs. So that didn't make us feel too secure. So now we've gone ahead and we put on some RV locks. And this is unique to us. We have a key fob, we have a key pad, and we have a manual key. Three ways to get in and it gives you an alarm before the batteries run out. So there's really no excuse for the batteries to run out on you. We replaced this one, our main door, this one on our baggage door. Come around here. This is normally what they call the generator compartment, but for us, this is where we keep our batteries and solar system, which we'll show you in another video. And this is the other side of our pass-through. This whole thing opens, but the door is right here. So we are totally secure with brand new locks, and we're very happy. Hey y'all, so it is our second weekend in Orange, Texas. We decided we'd finally get out and explore. <laughs> Last weekend it was raining, and this weekend mm -hmm. it's... Windy. A gale storm. <laughs> But we've also been working a lot. You know, we've had a lot of stuff to do both with our channel and other platforms and our jobs and the work just never stops. And so this is real life. So we are gonna try to go out and explore. I think we're visiting a place called, let me see if I can get it right. Sh Sri Lanka? No, Shangri-La. Oh, Shangri-La Botanical? Gardens, Gardens or something, yeah. And I think there's a river walk over there too. So we'll mm -hmm. try to get some footage for y'all and um, survive the winds. And we don't get blown away, yeah. Right. Welcome to Shangri-La. 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 <laughs> These right here are called foxtail ferns. Look how neat those look. I've never seen a fern like that. And then they're on this side as well. This is really pretty. We certainly didn't pick the best time of year to go to a garden. I know, it's probably really, really pretty y'all in the spring, yep. but this place is very well maintained even in the winter. December. It's January. Is it January? Yes. Oh, whatever. January. <laughs> but if y'all are in Orange, Texas, definitely check this place out. And I don't know what this part of it's called. There's another section that we're in. Let me show it to you. Ignore all the sirens. Apparently this is a lovely part of town. But at least the gardens are pretty. I don't know what the neighbors are up to. They have some flowering azaleas, which I guess all azaleas are flowering, right now in January. This is called Contrast Gardens. I bet that means in the spring it's really pretty because I saw a sign over here. When you get closer, it says a color will of flowers. So they must have like oh. different color flowers um, in the spring. It must look gorgeous in the spring. You can kind of see peaks of them over there. Yeah, look y'all, in between the hedges, there are different plants, you see them? And so in the spring, as Sean said, this would be really beautiful with all sorts of colors. But we're in here in January, so all we get is green. I guess we ought to be happy with green, huh? Green's better than brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, truer words were never spoken. I know it's windy, so I don't know if you can hear me, but for your own safety, let alligators eat the man. That's what it looks like. Lovely message. 
This is a bayou. Natural. Really pretty. Look at all that algae and stuff on the water. I wonder if they do have alligators here. All right, I got a riddle for you. You got a tree and you got a wall. And you have to build the wall, but you've got this big old beautiful tree. So what do you do? Do you chop down the tree? Nope. You build the wall around the tree. Of course you had that answer, didn't you? You know what else is neat? Flowers in January. Look at this. You see all this? They got flowers in January. That is so awesome. Hey, excuse me. Don't I know you from somewhere? This is BDR's new friend, Butterbean. <laughs> I like butter beans. Butter bean, you got some fancy gear going on. Look at your rubber boots. It looks more like the Predator. Yeah, and you got rubber boots too. Y'all could definitely be some RVers if y'all would like to think about that. So we are fixing to make pizza in the BDR RV. Matthew's attempting to light the oven. Sometimes it's temperamental. Yay! That's confirmation. He got it going. We got these at Walmart. Don't sh don't follow their directions. They say to cook it for what is it? For seven to ten minutes at 400 degrees. If you do that in one of these little tiny ovens that we have, it'll be soggy. Soggy pizza. Crank it up as high as it goes. Does anybody else like soggy pizza? I don't like soggy pizza. Alright, that's just the first layer of cheese. First layer. Then, what's next? Pepperonis are, no. Evil. Evil is next. You can tell who the black olives are for, y'all, because Matthew just, you know, he wears it all over his voice and face. Yep. Nasty little things that you sweep off the floor and throw away. <laughs> yes. Will Matthew be able to attempt to put this in the oven without dropping it on the floor? Let's give you all a zoom in of it because it can end very badly. <laughs> I love your vote of confidence. <laughs> I have a secret weapon. The Blackstone Hibachi thingies. Yeah, that's exactly what they're called. Mm -hmm. Man, I can just hear a round of applause in my head, y'all. He made it. Yay! All right, y'all. Time to turn the pizza. And admittedly, these ovens do not cook evenly. So I found through trial and error that don't do this to me. No. <laughs> you were saying through trial and error, you need to turn the pizza some so it'll cook evenly on both sides. Time for this beauty to come out of the oven. Yay, y'all, the pizza is done. Do not drop it. Yay, Matthew gets a cookie. I don't eat cookies. Which means Sean, Sean gets, a gets a cookie. <laughs> Here goes our second pizza. We made two. Because we hungry. Yay, well, Matthew's hungry. I'm He's hungry. a hungry man. Yep. Not like a TV dinner called Hungry Man. Yeah, <laughs> nasty. You heard it, folks. If you never had one, Matthew said they're nasty. Yep, yeah, don't buy it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's cutting the pizza, and as I said before, we do not have a pizza cutter because we donated it. <laughs> you hear that crust? 
That's what you want in a pizza. Well, we're fixing to eat our pizza. Homemade pizza. We're so excited. We love pizza. Yeah, we do. What is your favorite thing to cook in your RV oven? And if it's not pizza, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs>